I am working on a collection uh, about Gabriel Dumont, Uriel, and the resistance period. The way my family is related to Gabriel Dumont is that he was named after his uncle, uh, Gabriel Dumont, who lived in the Edmonton area. <clears throat> and that's the line that my family comes from. Um, let's see. One of my favorite um, stories about Gabriel Dumont was that um, he just knew the, uh, the land in which he lived so well that when the Canadian forces came in and occupied Batash, he was actually there for four days when they were there looking for him. And so what he would do is that he would sleep with, you know, hide out with people that were protecting him during the uh, night. And every morning he would watch the scouts saddle up and get on their horses and set out, and he would follow them all day. In their, ride in their tracks, or he would ride you know, somewhere where they couldn't see him. But for four days, they, he did this, and it was quite amazing. He got away. He just, and after four days, because he couldn't find Louis Riel, he went uh, south over the medicine line. But it was so interesting that, and I just love the story about him following, because it's so, um, I mean, the thing about guerrilla warfare, the two characteristics are stealth and surprise. And the fact that he could follow his people that were tracking him all day, to me, said something about his ability uh, to, his, abil his stealth, I guess. Um, so this is a poem about that. Um, Father Alexis Andre, um, when people were looking for uh, Dumont, he said, you're looking for Gabriel? Oh, you're wasting your time. There is not a single blade of grass on the prairie that he does not know. Not a single blade of grass on the prairie you do not know. Not a single blade will betray and reveal your whereabouts. After the arrival of Middleton, the Northwest Field Force, and the Gatling gun, after the death of your brother, Ike Bao, in battle, after the troops set fire to your house and stable, after they confiscate your prized herd of horses and your billiard table, after Madeleine and family are hiding in the trees, after you are shot and wounded in the head, you will not surrender. You gather 80 rifle and 40 revolver cartridges and firearms from the Métis who surrendered or died, from the Canadian forces lying dead in the field. You would not be taken alive. And not a single blade of grass will renounce you, your life depending on the coolies, leaves, limbs, and blades of buffalo grass. So for four days at dawn, you follow Les Anglais patrols searching Batoche, the morning light glinting off their gun barrels, their horses' breath signaling the direction of their advance. You trail them riding in their tracks to avoid being tracked, hiding in the bluffs, concealed in the coolies, crouched in the willows, the May nights cold along the river. Invisible but hunted, you slipped through their sight to become the dogwood lining the South Saskatchewan, the ascending light at dawn and the descending light at night, the poplars and cottonwoods flourishing along the river, the force of fierce winds pushing the soldiers back, the dust blown in their faces. When they moved, you moved. They stopped, you stopped. And each night you'd return to Batoche for refuge until the next morning you'd wait watch them saddle up and set out again in their tracks to stalk who stalks you. But not a single blade, not a single blade betrayed you. One thing I should mention, I guess, and I forgot to, was that um, the Métis in winter camps spoke a language called Machif. And the language is basically Cree language structure with French uh, nouns and articles. There's also some Soto in there, or Ojibwe, but um, it's mostly Cree language structure. Um, so 
in this collection, I want to use more Machif, um, the Machif language. It's such an interesting language to combine, an Aboriginal language in French, because it's like, que caleur, Oma. <laughs> so this, I would love to do a spoof, actually. Um, I don't know, maybe I will one day. Um, these are wintering words. Michif, problem, family, among the nuclear language types. One parent French, the other Cree, Soto. Wintering words, sliced thin, smoke-dried, pounded, fine, folded in fat and berries. Pemmican, not pigeon or creole. Combining two grammatical maps, paddle trade routes along waterways, traverse rapids, white and dangerous, with Ojibwe women à la façon de pays. Métis traders speak la langue of double genetic origin, pleasure doubled, twice the language, twice the culture, mixta, not mixed up nor muddled, but completely French, Cree, Ojibwe, different tongues, buffalo, a delicacy source language, right from the cow's mouth, mother of all in-group conversation, Wintering camps dispersal, neither Cree, Soto, nor French exactly, but something else. Not less, not half, and not lacking. I think I'll read you these suite of poems. There, you'll probably find them very similar, but maybe it's because it's going to be one poem one day. I'm not sure. Um, when I was doing my research, I ran across... Um, this idea that the buffalo basically, when they disappeared, that they disappeared into the holes in the ground, and it's an Arapaho um, belief. And so I started working with this idea of the buffalo disappearing into the ground. We were born beneath the water in the darkest depths of the lake. We rise, our hooves rumbling, spewing like water, muzzles dripping. In the darkest depths of the lake will Gabriel call us his brothers, spewing lake water, muzzles dripping, pulling the universe in our sway. Will Gabriel call us his brothers, riding his swiftest buffalo runner, aiming la petite, pulling the universe in their sway, the Milky Way dust of buffalo spirits passing. Riding his swiftest buffalo runner, will Gabriel aiming la petite, rise, his horse's hooves rumbling, the Milky Way dust of buffalo spirits passing. We were born beneath the water. Was your disappearance a foreshadowing of the thunderheads pressing over us? Wave of imperial flood encroached on our homeland, scored it. Each time a line was drawn in the mind, it became fence posts barring our accustomed access to hunting, fishing, and the river, etched in the Great Plains or etched in the mind, mirrored in the plate at the geographical center of North America. The earth is where we first, first gathered, pawing and wallowing. Our grand heads swipe side to side, forming the shape of the infinity into which we must follow down into the holes of the earth, we must follow as prophecy told of storms to come, floods, drought, fire, and disease. Our great heads swipe side to side, pulling the universe in their sway. The Milky Way twists in our horns, shaking, burning dust below. Will Gabriel call us again, invite us to his feast? Will he call us? The earth is where we first gathered in the buffalo wallows, carved out by the backbones of our greater ones, those that have returned to the earth sores of industry now. We come from and will, re will return with the buffalo through the holes in the earth. Louis, our prince. If only your fine mind could have leapt in another time, along this colony's narrow path to nationhood, it's not just that the path is narrow, but it's also borrowed from another people, another place. Be it trouble, tremble, or terror, you had to walk before the gallows, alone or with the priest that betrayed you at Patosh, 
anointing your last rites. God curse them, Louis. They will regret this, regret hanging you. It will be the shadow side of Canada's story, indelible as the iron stakes of ancestral memory on this grid map witnessing clearly how the quarter sections got divvied up at mealtime, who received 200,000 acre grazing leases or railway mile belts, who accumulated in the greasy politics of real estate while there was still no land for the Métis. They will regret taking our prince, our prophet, and it will manifest in the markings of places previously touched by you, Louis, the one who gave us Manitoba, brokered pluralism and language rights. They will regret taking our prince, our prophet, the one among us gifted, our seer, because when they look across these plains, they will see the monuments built to him, the days named after him. And when their children ask what Louis did, they will have to answer.